Hey, it's James from Rubberflow. Today I'm excited to announce that you can generate versions of datasets, export those dataset versions to a local file, and train your computer vision models all using the Rubberflow Python package. Using this feature, you can take a code-centric approach to your model versioning, training, and launch. Instead of going to our web interface and manually creating versions, applying augmentations, applying pre-processing steps, you can now do so all through code. In this video, I'm going to talk through how we can leverage the Rubberflow Python package to generate versions of a dataset um, using a local JSON file, which contains all of my pre-processing and augmentation steps. And to um, get a little hint as to what we'll be going after at the end of this video, um, earlier I kicked off a couple training jobs and within the space of about two minutes, I was able to start five different versions of a training um, or rather create five different versions of my model and kick off train jobs for them um, using local configurations. So imagine you're starting a new aerial imagery project and you've already found a couple configurations seem to have worked well on previous related aerial projects you've worked on. You can keep all those configurations in local files and instantly apply them to a new project you've created and kick off train jobs for them all in only a couple of minutes. Um, so the one I'm showing here um, allows you to detect the presence of a mug in, a, uh, in an image or a video and training is ongoing. So let's get into it. How do we actually um, generate project versions with the RoboFlow Python package? And um, once we speak about that, we'll then talk about the training um, stage. Luckily for us, it's incredibly easy. Um, we're gonna be writing under 50 lines of codes in this tutorial to get everything going. So firstly, let's import the RoboFlow Python package, which we can do using from RoboFlow import RoboFlow. Then create an object which we will use to interface with the RoboFlow library. So we will use a local variable uh, called RoboFlow API key, or rather environment variable. And then we will import JSON for later use. Now we'll create a workspace object which contains information about our workspace. To retrieve your workspace ID, you can go into um, a project, copy the first part in the URL, and then we paste it in, and this will let us access all of our workspace projects using our API key. Um, for this tutorial, we're gonna use these configurations in this configurations folder and apply them to multiple different projects. So to do so, I'm gonna create a list of projects which contains the IDs of all of the projects that I want to use. So I'll start with this one here, add it into our projects list, and then we'll go on to our other mug detector. Let's see, uh, this one here, and copy the ID and paste it in. Next, we are gonna kick off a training job using our starter configuration to begin with. So we're gonna use one JSON file um, which contains information about our augmentation steps and pre-processing. In this case, a crop and auto-orient and grayscale pre-processing steps. Um, and then we're gonna apply that to both of these projects. So to start, we'll create a function called generate and train. And this will take in a project and also a configuration a JSON object. Next, we'll create our RoboFlow project, which we can do by calling the workspace object we created earlier. And this will contain the name of our project, such as mug detector with the ID at the end. Then we will generate a version. We can do so by doing RoboFlow, or rather, RF project.generate version. And then here we will pass in this configuration JSON object, which we'll define later. This is what we have in our JSON file. Then we will kick off train job. So we can, uh, or before we do rather, we need to retrieve our project item that contains information about the new version we created. So the 
generate version returns an integer which contains the new version ID and then we create a new object that uses the ID to get our model into our codes and now training is just as simple as doing project item dot train so in these four lines of codes we have imported our project we have generated the version we have retrieved that um information about that version and now we have kicked off a train job using the RoboFlow um, API. So let's call this function uh, generate and train. We are gonna use our starter.json file that we defined earlier so we can do with open configuration starter.json and then we'll read it as f and then we'll say configuration equals json.load and then our file and then let's just start by using the first project in our list and applying our configuration. Now in this code, we will be able to generate a version and train a version uh, using our starter.json um, augmentations and pre-processing that we just defined. And we'll do so on our uh, mug detector EOCWP project. So let's run it and see what happens. Load our project, we've just generated a new dataset version, version seven. And then this bit takes a little bit of time as it generates the version. Um, and then it will export data, prepare it for training, and then it will reach out to RoboFlow to start training. And now we're already training our model. So this was on EOCWP. So if I go over here, we can see that at 3 one PM, we just kicked off a new training job. Simple as that. We have now um, kicked off a training job that uses augmentations and pre-processing steps we defined here. Now, you may be wondering, what if I've got multiple configurations and I want to apply that to um, another project? Well, that's easy too. Um, we are going to define a new function to do that, which we will call apply multiple, and then let's call these configurations experiments. Um, and then we'll take in a project name um, and then for configuration in our configurations folder configurations folder we'll open the configuration which we can do like this load the configuration and here we have three different ones in our starter so we have rotate no grayscale so we've got a rotate augmentation no grayscale pre-processing we have a rotate grayscale so rotate and grayscale pre-processing and then we have uh, just our standards uh, that we used in the starter with auto orient and crop but without grayscale so we have a no grayscale here so we're going to generate versions for all of those so in this code, we've just opened up all of those configurations um, and then we can call the function we created earlier with our project name and our configuration that we open up. And this will allow us to apply, uh, to create many different versions, one for each of these JSON files. So we're gonna remove this starter.json because we no longer uh, we're going to apply uh, multiple different configurations and then we'll call our function apply multiple experiments and then again let's um let's do it on the first of our projects here um which is this eocwp which we have open um, and we're we already kicked off a couple train jobs but let's do a few more um, and now with this code we can run it Oh, configuration, there's missing an S there. We can run this code and it's going to start generating versions. So let's just move our codes here. On the left, you can see version eight's just been generated. Um, and then we'll see a little arrow here indicating that training has just, uh, is just about to begin. And um, so it generates the images and in just a second, we'll see train kick off. Let's refresh. There we go, training in progress. We've got version eight, version nine, version 10, and then it's gonna keep going for all of these four versions. 
Now, once this is done, we will have four versions with four different configurations um, being trained on the RoboFlow platform. And in addition to that, if we wanted to, we could cycle through this projects list, just add a for loop here, like for project and projects. And then with this code, we can apply each of these configurations to uh, generate four different data set versions in each of our projects. So let's say we were um, kicking off uh, like, a, like a kitchen item detection projects um, and we know that the augmentations that we have here have worked on our mug detection in the past. Um, so we want to see if they'll work on detecting plates, for example. All we would do is annotate our images, put them into RoboFlow, and then uh, put in our project ID here um, and then maybe we want to train another one separately um, that is for identifying um, pieces of porcelain, for example. Um, we just put the project ID in here and then we could use all of our configurations. So to wrap up, using this feature, you're able to successfully store all of your configurations locally in files. These can get as complicated as you want them to be. In our uh, RoboFlow documentation, which uh, we will link to in the description, we have a list of different augmentations you can apply. All of the ones you can apply in the RoboFlow platform are here and pre-processing steps too. Um, so we could use all of these in our configurations. And over time, we can change them too um, to get something that we uh, that's most effective for our use case. So we define our uh, augmentations and pre-processing steps in JSON. We use Python to generate a version based on that and kick off training on the RoboFlow platform. And then over time, you will see, let's see one that I kicked off earlier, um, you will see your training graph appear when training begins. And here you'll be able to see your map, your precision, and your recall change over the epochs um, uh, over which your project is being trained. And that is how you can generate versions and kick off training using the RoboFlow Python package. If you want the code that we've used here, um, we'll put it on GitHub and put a link in the description. So thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing what you can do programmatically with the RoboFlow Python package. Thank you.